My question is, uh, is the discourse we are having here in this room and some of the similar things like uh, Nicole is doing and other people, is this occurring at any branches of government, at any universities, at any think tanks, at any research institutions? Uh, and if it is, I mean, if, do we have serious reason to think it might be occurring and we don't know about it? Mm -hmm. And if it is not occurring, why? Okay. Um, it's an interesting question. And I mean, three years ago, I was at, I think it was three years ago, at ASPO in Barcelona. And there were only 100 people or so there. And uh, there were two um, US Senate Intelligence Committee people there with their military minder. And now their military minder wasn't in military fatigue. And they were very open about it, saying, oh, yeah, we're just here to look. But like, you know, I don't know how your Senate works. Uh, um, you, know, um, uh, <clears throat> you know, if we sent off our people, we send them with the minder to keep the stop them, cause, but them causing trouble, not anybody going after. No, but so you kind of say, OK, there's people looking at things. They must have been reasonably senior. But you don't necessarily know. And the first thing to remember is, just because somebody in a government is looking at something or talking about something is not the same as the government looking at something or talking about something, OK? Um, you know, I mean, that's the first thing. Uh, some months ago, um, but they've been doing it for a little while, because I know people are a little bit involved, um, the British government, there had been meetings Firstly, with various interested people. Then that there'd been secret meetings between the Bank of England, the Department of Energy and Climate Change, and the Ministry of Defence. Uh, and that when, uh, as you do in Britain, you say you can apply as a journalist to say, through freedom of information, what were they talking about? They knew it was about peak oil. And they were told, no, this is now under the Official Secrets Act. OK? So basically, well, we're not going to talk about what we were talking about. And that's how it works. Uh, then uh, a little bit later, there was that leaked report from the Bundeswehr in Germany. Um, and again, um, that is ongoing. They are looking at it, and they are communicating, or trying to communicate with their government. Um, it is part of an ongoing project. Um, and that's all I know. I know one person is involved, but it's all very quiet. Um, and I don't know anything more. Um, so, and in the Irish government, in the book that's coming out, he writes the preface. Now, it won't be in the US edition, but in the, in the Irish and British, he writes the preface. He says, growth is over. He says, we have to do an organized retreat. Now, whether you agree that you can do an organized retreat is another matter. He says it. Now, here's a problem. And this is kind of one of those frustrations of, you know, he knows Colin Campbell, knows him pretty well. He organized a peak oil conference a few years ago. He's their minister. Um, he's a Green Party minister. They're in a coalition government. He's the Minister for Energy, Communications, Natural Resources, but he's also been deeply involved in dealing with the financial crisis in Ireland and the banking system. So you kind of go, OK, and he's written this in the book. But when you talk with him, absolutely and utterly thinks there could be a great opportunity for Ireland here. We combine our ICT experience with our wind power and our great wind resources. Why people call wind blowing in the sky a resource when you haven't, when all it is is, you know, it's basically a resource for drying your clothes. Um, but he's convinced of this, that, you know, this is an opportunity. And partially I think that's because, unlike us guys, He's all these people, business people, coming up with their new plans, looking for funding for you know, the revolutionary wave machine that will 
make loads of power and all of this. And they're all, obviously, they're selling their ideas. So he's surrounded. He's got all this like techno-optimism coming in his door every day. Um, and we say, look, you know, you've, you've got to do it. You've got to, we, we frame this now. I do stuff with the director of ASPO in Ireland sometimes in these meetings. We try and say, look, we frame this as a risk management problem. You might be right. We could be wrong, but look who's saying it. We have to do, it's about managing. It's about keeping a couple of fires in the pokers in the fire. We already failed. Look what happened just a few years ago. Let's not fail again. So you put it in that sort of way that they don't have to buy what you're saying totally. You just have to say, well, look, it's in a risk. It's a risk. It's a big one. And let's, you don't even have to organize. Let's just look at that. And you know, it's very, very hard where you have these meetings with people like that. Now, no, there are lots of people who agree with you in the European Commission now, or more will, about peak oil, or that we're in a bad financial situation, that Europe, you know, they're not gonna, nobody's gonna shout out the Euro's going down. But listen, there's been plenty of discussion around it. You know, like, will, Ger will, will super Germany, the strong ones, step out? Not everybody else drop drop out, but they might step out, etc. cetera. Um, so there's all sorts of people looking at these things. But the problem is, what are people doing? It's very hard. I really think, I, I'm surprised, if you're looking at the political system, I'm surprised at, and I don't know if this is the same in other countries, there is one person in our parliament of 160 with a science degree, and it's a BSc, in it's sort of yeah science of some sort. Um, <clears throat> our energy establishment, let's say the people in running the companies, the people um, running our gas and our grid and all of that, they cannot possibly conceive of there ever being a major disruption. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> last week, there was a conference in Dublin. There was your own secretary, Chu, speaking. There was Tanaka, head of the IEA. And then there was all of these people doing their scenario modeling to 2050. And Tanaka, when asked by a member of the audience, What about uranium? You know, is, were there, you know, could we not use, is there not a uranium shortage and lithium for things? He said, no. I think, there, you know, effectively resources are infinite because you can always, you know, there's new technology and price will signal more of them. And this is Tanaka. This is, you know, this is like limited resource economics 101. And, you know, I, I find it, I, I just don't know what people are doing. I've, I've given you what I know about what governments are doing. And sometimes you scratch your head where you think they're doing what you think they should be doing. And you come back and it's something other. You know, they've put their faith in some pony on the 320 at Chepstow sort of thing. You know, that, you, 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 you know, and you, yeah, I, I'm left inarticulate and speechless at times. But, but are they going to come around? They're not going to stand up and say it, I think, for the reasons I said. They'd spook the markets and all of that. Um, there is, is, actually, I think of another thing. Within the European Commission, there is one group where they, are start, they have begun to say, so, you know, I, should, I shouldn't remember this, but yeah, where they've begun to say, what happens if all of this stuff, the renewables, the energy systems, don't get in? What are the implications? Um, <clears throat> on the pure deflation side, you know, you hear so much talked about this state of the economy. Like, I sometimes flick around and you see what, you know, especially in America, I think you talk a lot more about your dollar than we ever do, I think, about the euro. Um, 
So, and it's hard to know in what the websites one looks at, are they fringe ideas or are they gaining traction? So you do hear people talking about collapse of the dollar and you wonder, are people looking at it? Um, but yeah, I don't know. Does anybody here, anybody here know of a really good government program? Yeah? Yeah? The Women, Infants, and Children's Program. It's a program that provides food to pregnant women and women who have children under five. Um, it works quite well. It also provides supplemental nutritional information. Um, its biggest failing is that it provides formula when it shouldn't, but it also will provide a breast pump rental. Um, it may not be perfect, but it does an excellent job of ensuring that there is not hunger in women who are pregnant and in children who are under the age of five. Uh, so it's to start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, seeing the time, now we are going to a ask Ms. Nicole Foss and Dr. Tainter to join Mr. Korowitz on the stage, and you will be able to come back to the mic and ask a question of the panel of the three of them. They've been talking about collapse today and scenarios for the future and risks for the future. And let's, let's see what our panelists have to say on that. So we'll put them all three together right up there. <laughs> 